What is up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy James Eeks and I'm back today with my how to build a team with your favorite Pokemon guide. And guys, you got to take it from the meme master himself here on how to build teams with wacky Pokemon. I've top cut official Pokemon events with Empoleon, Aridos, and Maractus. I've built really successful teams with unorthodox Pokemon like Camerapt, Delcaddy, Thievul, which I'll be talking about in this video today, and Perugly to name another one. I've also had some pretty crazy teams that I've used on my stream, like I've used a mono food team, I've used mono ice, and etc. Random teams like that, to a lot of success actually. So if you guys do want to see me use uh, wacky teams and watch me battle live, please do check me out on my Twitch guys. I do stream full time, 5 days a week, from 2pm PST to 6pm PST, every day except for Wednesday and Saturday. So please check me out on there guys. The first thing that I really want to stress in building a team with your favorite Pokemon is you want to identify what your Pokemon can do that no other Pokemon can. Almost every Pokemon in the game has something that it can do better than another Pokemon, whether it's big or small, and what we want to do is find that out. Unfortunately, I'm going to say there is a disclaimer that not every Pokemon can do something better than another Pokemon. Honestly, one of my favorite Pokemon ever, Macargo, is is just really, really bad. Like, I can't figure out something that uh, he could do better than another Pokemon, but that's for another story. We're going to try our best here today, okay, guys? And then the next thing I want you guys to do is, when you've got your Pokemon in mind, after we kind of break it down and think of a really good set and stuff like that, we want to think of a really, really strong Pokemon in the current meta to pair it with or a really strong Pokemon that it's going to work really well with because your kind of favorite Pokemon who might not be the best is actually going to have a way higher chance of succeeding when he is supported and helping out or even helping support a really strong Pokemon which you guys are going to see that was kind of something that I did with my uh, sleeper favorite Pokemon picks. I'm going to go into some examples of teams that I've used in the past with some of my favorite Pokemon which are Ariados and Maractus. Those are my two favorite Pokemon, honestly. So I'm gonna go into how I approached building the team with them and how I kind of figured out their moveset. So let's get into it. Just a quick little thing, guys. I do have my script right over here to my right. So if I am looking over there, forgive your boy. I got a lot to say and I don't wanna miss anything. So that's why I'll be looking over there. So the first Pokemon I'm gonna talk to you guys about today is Ariados. Ariados is probably my favorite Pokemon ever and Obviously, he's a very overlooked Pokemon. He doesn't seem very good on paper, and you know, he does have a lot of weaknesses, but we're gonna try and make him shine as best we can. I've actually top cut official events with Ariados, uh, premier challenges and mid-season showdowns, nothing at the regional level. But I've beaten very, very good players with my favorite Pokemon, and that's such a cool feeling, so I wanna help you guys get that too. Unfortunately guys, Ariados is not in Sword and Shield, but these lessons are going to apply no matter what. These lessons I'm actually going to show you are going to, some of them are going to have to do with previous VGC formats, but all the same rules apply of team building and kind of looking at what the meta has that's very popular and what you're going to make your Pokemon do against it. So it, all the same rules apply. So this team where I had the most success with Ariados was actually in VGC 2015 and if you guys weren't playing back then pretty much the rules were it was X and Y and it was the year after X and Y came out so it was the national decks in X and Y where all the Pokemon were allowed except for restricted legendaries so like Groudon, Kyogre and then the mythical legendaries such as Celebi or Jirachi. So as you can see on this team, Landorus and Thunderous were allowed, stuff like that. So that was the meta we were currently working with in 2015 when we made this pretty successful Ariados team. So here I am guys here on PokemonDB.net, that's the website I use for my kind of Pokedex-esque searching. And our goal here guys is to figure out what Ariados can do better than other Pokemon. We're going to try and find, you know, that silver lining on a forgotten Pokemon like Ariados. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to start looking through its moveset and we really want to find those standout moves that can be used very, very competitively and make Ariados shine. So let's start scrolling down here and I'm kind of going to bring out moves that I think are actually really cool or that can actually be really useful. 
Uh, string shot is actually a really cool move. String shot lowers both enemy Pokemon speed by two. So it's effectively like a opposite tailwind. So it's actually like a very, very big use of speed control. So I actually think that's really cool on Arido. So we're going to keep that in mind. Shadow Sneak is cool, having that option of having a priority attack, same with Sucker Punch. Unfortunately, Ariados' cool moves that he gets, like Spiderweb and Toxic Thread here, don't really have a use in VGC, unfortunately. So guys, when we get down to Ariados' egg moves, that's where we're going to see the real powerhouse move that's going to help Ariados shine in competitive play. And that is going to be Rage Powder. If you guys don't know what Rage Powder does, it's pretty much like Follow Me, where it forces the enemy Pokemon's single target attacks to focus the Pokemon using Rage Powder or Follow Me. The only difference is that Rage Powder does not affect grass types and Pokemon that have abilities such as Overcoat. So it is slightly worse than Follow Me, but it is an absolutely amazing support move. One of the best support moves in the game. So guys, here I am back in the team builder, and like I said, this was a VGC 2015 team, so I wanted to find someone to pair with Ariados that was extremely strong, and I chose none other than the big daddy of VGC 2015 himself, Mega Kangaskhan. It's no surprise to see that Ariados worked well with Mega Kangaskhan because a lot of things worked well with Mega Kangaskhan, but commonly in 2015, guys, we saw Amoongus and Kangaskhan on the same team, so because Amoongus uses Rage Powder. So I mean, why would we ever use Ariados over Amoongus? Obviously guys, the goal here is to have fun and use our favorite Pokemon, but let's see if we can actually find some real merit in using Ariados over Amoongus. And spoiler alert, we actually, there actually are some things that Ariados can do that Amoongus can't. So let me get into that. But like I said, even if the differences are big or small, we definitely want to know the merit in our Pokemon over a common Pokemon that might replace them, such as Amoongus over Ariados. Something really cool that Ariados has is being immune to sleep. So Ariados cannot go to sleep from moves like Hypnosis, Dark Void, because of its ability Insomnia. So that's one cool thing that Ariados has over Amoongus. And another cool thing is that Ariados is actually four times resistant to fighting moves, which is Kangaskhan's only weakness, right? So being able to Rage Powder in Kangaskhan's only weakness and take little to no damage at all is something that's very, very good that Ariados can do. That Amoongus, while resists fighting moves half, Ariados resists them four times, so it's even better. Ariados also has that super cool move String Shot that I talked about. String Shot's been in the game since Gen 1 and it's almost like kind of a meme, you know, of like just a really bad move, but I actually use String Shot to a lot of success when I could protect my Kangaskhan or protect a partner and then String Shot both of them and no one sees that coming and you just completely neuter the enemy team's speed. So String Shot was something really cool that Amoongus could not do. Amoongus doesn't really have speed control of its own except for spore which you could think of as speed control in a way because if you can't attack then their speed doesn't matter you know what i mean but string shot was actually really cool and that was something that amoongus couldn't do too while i didn't actually end up using it on this specific ariados ariados actually has shadow sneak and sucker punch which are two priority moves that amoongus is not able to do so you're actually able to finish off Pokemon at very low HP and get kills with them with Ariados, which is actually super cool. So that's yet another thing that Ariados can do that Amoongus can't. And guys, this goes for every Pokemon that we pretty much talk about when we're using our favorite Pokemon or a traditionally weak Pokemon is that you actually have a surprise factor. I know this is completely obvious, but lots of people don't know that Ariados' ability is Insomnia. I've had people Sleep Powder or Spore into Ariados only to see the little message pop up, Insomnia prevents Ariados from going to sleep. So when you have these surprise factors of really cool mons, you can actually take games off of people because they slipped up and they don't actually know how to beat Ariados. So stuff like that is actually really cool and that's going to go for pretty much almost every niche Pokemon that you're ever going to use. So it's something to keep in mind when you're playing against an opponent that might not be completely educated on your weird pick. So guys, this is how I actually ended up using Ariados successfully. I had Foul Play as my only attack since it's, you know, based off of the enemy's attack so it can hit them really hard and it can't miss because of its 100% accuracy so I wasn't relying on something like Megahorn for example. So this is how I actually used Ariados and I actually loved this team. Ariados was really cool and it just felt so cool using like one of my favorite Pokemon, you know what I mean? So. This was how Ariados shined. We actually kind of just rounded out the team with a pretty standard 
a pretty standard squad of things that work well with Kangaskhan. In 2015, you know, we had Thunderous and Landorus. We had Bisharp, which is going to make people not want to bring their Intimidators. And then we had Jellicent, which was kind of a trigger mode. I could burn stuff with Will-O-Wisp and Scald. And Jellicent actually just worked really well against some common Pokemon like Heatran back then. So, um, yeah, this was actually the team we ended up doing. But pretty much what I did, guys, was I found... Aridos. I found out the cool moves. I found out what he could do that other Pokemon couldn't. And then I paired him with a really, really strong Pokemon such as Kangaskhan. So that's how we succeeded with Aridos. But let's get into Maractus now. So guys, of course, when I was using Aridos, which is my favorite Pokemon ever, I wanted to use my other favorite Pokemon, which is Maractus. You know, I can't... It's hard to ask me what my favorite Pokemon is because I love Aridos and Maractus so much. So it was cool that I was able to able to actually succeed in tournament with not only Aridos but Maractus as well. So let's get into how I use Maractus really well. So the first set that I ever did have success with Maractus was in BGC 2016, which was actually in Omega Ruby, Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and it was a restricted format. So this allowed the use of Kyogre and Palkia and stuff like that. So I actually ran a Storm Drain Maractus which Storm Drain boosts your special attack if you're hit by a water move. It also forces water moves into you, kind of like Lightning Rod. And I actually paired it with Surf Primal Kyogre and Telepathy Surf Palkia. So I was constantly trying to surf my own team, hitting big water moves on the other side of the field and boosting up Maractus. And then Maractus also had Worry Seed so that I could get rid of opposing Groudon's Sun and then hit them with the water move. You know, it had Helping Hand to boost Kyogre, and then Grass Knot to hit really, really hard after you get those special attack boosts because the Pokemon in that format were really, really heavy, such as Kyogre and Groudon. And then Spiky Shield just to protect myself, you know? So Maractus actually did work pretty well here with Kyogre and Palkia, which was a really fun team. I also had a pretty similar team here that I used in VGC 2019 Moon Series, which was a very similar concept where it was Storm Drain Maractus, Next to Surf Palkia and Surf Kyogre, I also had Skill Swap Stack Attacka, so I could Skill Swap with Kyogre and set the rain back up, and then give Kyogre Beast Boost, and then start sweeping. It was actually a really fun team, but yeah, this was like definitely inspired by the 2016 team I just showed you guys, and this one operated similarly and had a little bit of success too. So this one was actually really fun. So as you guys could guess, I was very, very excited when I saw that Maractus actually made it into Sword and Shield. And so I started looking into how I can make Maractus competitively viable. And same thing as Aridos, we're going to go through its moveset. We're going to find those really cool niche moves or abilities that are going to make it be able to function really well. And that's how we're going to start building a team with it. And so first off the bat, we can see that Maractus has Chlorophyll. Unfortunately, at the time of this video coming out and me making competitive teams, uh, Pokemon Bank wasn't out yet, or Pokemon Home. But so Maractus actually didn't have access to Storm Drain here. But so we had Chlorophyll. And the thing is, is that I already knew about this prior, but you can actually see that Maractus has After You. And so Chlorophyll and After You has always been a feared combo in VGC because of the use of pairing it with Torkoal. Torkoal being an insanely slow Pokemon that sets up the sun, which would make Maractus or another Chlorophyll user super fast, doubled speed in the sun, and then them after Ewing their slow Torkoal, making Torkoal now the fastest thing, well equally as fast as Maractus, and then eruptioning on them at super fast speeds is actually insane. So after you and Torkoal has been a thing since 2017, and Maractus kind of has its time to shine now because the thing is, is Maractus's main competition of previous After You users of Lilligant and, and then another good sun paired Pokemon like Jumpluff, they are not in the game. So, Vi so Maractus's only competition, guys, is Vileplume. Let's get into that. So the real thing with Maractus here is we're going to be comparing the pros and cons of Maractus with Vileplume because Vileplume is Maractus's only competition. That's something that we can actually be thankful for the national deck cut being in this game is honestly Maractus would have a way harder time shining if Lilligant was in the game because I honestly believe that Lilligant does what Maractus does just better. But 
on paper some people think that vile plume is just better than maractus but honestly that's not true and i'm going to show you guys what maractus can do better than vile plume so guys if i go in right here i'm going to show you guys the speeds of maractus and torqual maractus excuse me maractus and vile plume maractus is base 60 and hits 112 with max speed with a neutral nature but then the thing is is vile plume hits 112 the exact same but vile plume has to be timid meaning it has to be raising its low speed stat of 50 which is usually suboptimal in making nature for pokemon and so that actually leaves maractus with some wiggle room of maractus being able to use whatever nature it wants it can go modest to boost its special attack and make it do even more damage or it can also go timid to ensure that you outspeed every other opposing Vileplume Torkoal that you ever play against. So that's one thing that Maractus has over Vileplume. A few highlight moves that Maractus has over Vileplume that I want to talk about are Leaf Storm, Helping Hand, Sucker Punch, Spiky Shield, and Weather Ball. And honestly, the big standout one from there to me is Leaf Storm. And now I know that actually seems like the least cool, you know, it's a grass move. I'm sure Vileplume gets grass moves too. Well, the thing is, is that Vileplume, like I said, is kind of required to go a timid nature. It needs to hit that 112 speed so that it can outspeed Dragapult in Chlorophyll. And Maractus doesn't. So Maractus can actually go modest, boosting its special attack even higher. And then it can run Leaf Storm, which is just a massive, massive grass attack which Vileplume is actually unable to do. So I actually see Maractus as the much more offensive option, being able to pump out a lot more damage because Leaf Storm versus Vileplume's best move of Energy Ball is a big difference. So Maractus actually does a lot more damage than Vileplume on the Grasp side. Helping Hand next to Torkoal is honestly really cool too because people commonly are going to try and fake out the Maractus to stop the After You combo from even happening. So you can Helping Hand before the fake out goes off and then boost Torkoal's attack that turn, who's probably going to be able to get that attack off since the fake out is going into Maractus and he's gonna do a boatload of damage. You can even Dynamax Torkoal that turn to you know keep him safe from an opposing big attack. And then you've got the helping hand, maybe you even one shot something with Torkoal. And then the next turn Maractus is probably still alive and can after you, your Dynamax Torkoal. So helping hand is actually super cool on Maractus since fake out is a big weakness to both Vileplume and Maractus, but Maractus can actually get around it proactively with helping hand while Vileplume would need to either take the fake out and waste its turn and potentially get knocked out or waste its turn protecting. Weather Ball is also super cool on Maractus. The fact that you can get a base 100 fire move in the sun coming out of Maractus is super cool. A lot of people don't see that coming. And that does a lot of damage. People are not ready for that. I've okayed a lot of Ferrothorns that just thought Maractus could do nothing. So another really cool move that Maractus can do that Vileplume can't. So guys, after I figured out what Maractus could do better than Vileplume, it was time to throw it on a team. Of course, it's going to be with Torkoal. And this is the latest Maractus set I used. I've used a lot of different Maractus sets. So let's get into this one. This one was actually Hasty Nature with Sucker Punch. So that I'm not timid, I'm not lowering my attack stat. And then my defense stat doesn't really matter because I do have a focus sash. And then this way I was faster than uh, opposing Vile Plumes, for example, since I'm boosted speed and we just went over that Vile Plume at its fastest cannot be faster than Maractus. So I actually ran Leaf Storm for that big punch of grass. I went for Sucker Punch. So I could really surprise people with that. No one's going to expect Sucker Punch coming from Maractus. And then I went with After You, Spiky Shield. Now, of course, there's lots of different sets you can run. I actually think Helping Hand is actually super good, like I just stated. But yeah, so I threw Maractus and Torkoal here. I've got Specs Torkoal so that I could hopefully get off a After You Specs Eruption, which can just absolutely melt through teams completely. So that was the true combo. And then... The rest of the team, you know, I knew Torkoal worked really well on Hard Trick Room, and then Maractus Torkoal is actually a fast mode that you can run. So that's kind of what I rounded out this team with. I've actually played with this team on my stream, and I have a few highlight matches of this team. I've got a VOD of it actually on my YouTube that you guys could check out. And yeah, so this is the team that we went with with Torkoal. Maractus, Indeedy, had a Reen, your standard kind of Hard Trick Room setup, and then Greedent with Belly Drum. This was a lot of fun. And then I had Scrafty for another option to try and help uh, Hatterene set up Trick Room, you know, Intimidate and Fake Out uh, as opposed to Follow Me because, you know, things like Duraludon and stuff uh, just get through Follow Me. So having the option to Intimidate 
and fake out to set up trick room was good so this was the team i actually went with uh to showcase maractus and Maractus is super cool. I think it's actually pretty underutilized in Sword and Shield right now, and I think uh, a Maractus Torkoal team could actually pop off. So maybe you'll see more from me with Torkoal Maractus. So there you have it, guys. You guys just saw how I used Ariados and Maractus successfully. I figured out what they could do that other Pokemon can't. I figured out how they fit into the current meta, what they could do well against current Pokemon, and then I put them in a team and had them show their stuff so it was really cool i hope you guys learned a little something from Ariados and maractus but now we're actually going to talk about thievil i wanted to talk about a new generation cool pokemon that i actually made a really successful team with and i just played with thievil on stream yesterday and we popped off completely thievil's actually super cool so guys i'm actually going to show you the thievil team that i used in on stream which i'm going to upload a few highlight battles of this team on youtube too but yeah, I'm going to talk about this Thievil team and how I actually went about building this team in a little more detail than the other ones. So kind of with the help of how I used Aridos, how I used Maractus, and now how I used Thievil. I hope that that is enough examples of being able to show you guys how I can make a team with a really cool Pokemon and how you guys can hopefully make one with your favorite Pokemon. So let's get into Thievil. So here we are guys looking at Thievil. I just want to give a little disclaimer that my Thievil and DD male team is not perfect. It is pretty good, but yeah, this team is not perfectly optimized, you know what I mean? So I'm sure Thievil could actually work better on another team, but this team I just cooked up in a couple days. So just a disclaimer, this is not the ultimate Thievil team ever, but he did work really well on this team. So immediately jumping out here while looking at Thievil is that we are going to want to use its ability Unburden. Unburden is an amazing ability runaway does absolutely nothing in battle and stakeout is actually not released yet so unburden's our only real option and that's what we're definitely going to use on our set here and the cool thing about thievil with unburden is that we actually have indeedy male in this game and indeedy female of course but they're actually able to say, set up psychic surge so we are actually going to make a tapu lele drift blim inspired kind of combo with Ndidi and Thievil. And Thievil's move pool is actually really cool when we get into it, what we can do with doubled speed. So let's get into that. Real quick guys, here we are on Nickit's page and I just wanted to check Nickit's egg moves and how knockoff, quick guard, torment. Knockoff's pretty cool, but we're not gonna be using it on this set. So back over to Thievil. But once again, we are a super fast unburdened support Pokemon and so I'm going to be looking for kind of supportish moves that Thievil can use really well. So I'm going to start looking here and I see Foul Play which is really cool because Foul Play is an amazing move and then when you're Stab, when you're a Dark type and you use Foul Play, your Foul Play does more than a non-Dark type using Foul Play. So we actually have Stab Foul Play on the board which is really cool. Parting Shot is actually super cool, an amazing move but the unfortunate thing is Thievil loses its doubled speed boost when it switches out, so that's kind of why I thought Parting Shot was a little counterintuitive when we're in Unburdened set. So let's keep looking around here, and ooh, this is where it gets juicy. Fake Tears coming out of Thievil. This is super cool because when you think of insanely fast Fake Tears in this meta, you think of Whimsicott, right? But the thing is, is Whimsicott cannot use Fake Tears in Psychic Surge. So with Psychic Surge and Ndidi, you could never make that Fake Tears combo happen with Whimsicott. But with Thievil being super fast, you actually can because we are going as fast as a Prankster almost, just going insanely fast, but it's not priority. So we can actually use Fake Tears in Psychic Train, which is super cool. And so let's keep looking. And this is another really good standout move here, I think is Snarl here on uh, Evil. The fact that we're super fast, we could stab dark type spread move them for a little bit of good chip damage, and then it lowers both their special attack, since we are mostly a support Pokemon, is super cool. But guys, we've already seen what? Foul Play, Fake Tears, and Snarl. Really, really good. And then we'll keep looking into TRs. And then honestly, Trick Room, Setup, Tailwinds, other annoying stuff it can still be a problem. So definitely I see Taunt here as a really cool move that Thievil can use. So I think that I've figured out my Thievil set. So let's hop back into the builder. So guys, here we are with Thievil here in the team builder. I've got those four moves that I thought were really good. I actually just went for max speed so that I'm as fast as, you know, possible. 
and then I went with max HP to make me as bulky as possible. There might be some kind of optimization I can make with a little more in special defense, a little less in HP, a little more in defense, stuff like that. But uh, I just made this pretty quick and this spread actually works perfectly fine. I'm bulky, I'm fast, and that's kind of what I want to do. And so of course the combo that Thievil is going to be paired with is Indeedy Mail. And that's kind of, you know, our, like I said, budget Tapu Lele Drift Blim or Tapu Lele uh, Acel Gore kind of combo. So here's my Ndidi. I actually went with Timid. I wanted to outspeed stuff like Pikachu, Excadrill. And a big thing was I wanted to at least be able to speed tie with opposing Arcanine if they are max speed because I want to kill them before they can snarl me down. Then so Timid's a really big deal. I went with Life Orb, you know, just for max damage. And then I actually put on the anti-trick room combo of Imprisoned Trick Room. I actually got that combo to go off a few times on stream so that was really cool and then obviously we have psychic as our stab move to fire off in psychic surge excuse me psychic terrain and then i went with mystical fire i thought mystical fire was a really good coverage move for me to be able to hit steel types that are going to be able to take the psychic so duraludon lower special attack hit x drill for super effective stuff like that so this was indeedy indeedy was pretty basic but i was going for you know max damage max speed so nothing too crazy here on indeedy so I thought a Pokemon that naturally went super well with Ndidi was Whimsicott. Whimsicott's Focus Sash is actually protected in the Psychic Terrain, and then Whimsicott is also able to speed up Ndidi with Tailwind. That was the thing was that Thievil gets really fast, but Ndidi is a pretty fast Pokemon, but honestly not fast enough. So I wanted something that could boost up Ndidi's sweeping potential even more, which was Tailwind Whimsicott, and then like I said with the Sash, they actually worked really well together. And I actually made sure to make my Whimsicott have a moveset that does not conflict with Psychic Terrain, right? Because Whimsicott is a prankster Pokemon, so I wouldn't be able to taunt or charm or fake tears, anything like that in my own Psychic Terrain. So I actually have Helping Hand to help boost my damage up and Tailwind and then Double Attack. So I actually don't conflict with Psychic Terrain at all here. So this Whimsicott set was really good in Psychic Terrain, which is kind of weird. So next, guys, I wanted a pretty clean answer to Dragapult, and then I know Durant's been picking up a lot of speed, so I wanted something that could kill Durant next to Togekiss, which is a big problem, and Scarf Heatwave is perfect for that. So that's actually why I went with Chandelure. Chandelure is very strong versus Whimsicott Charizard as well, which I also saw being a problem since Charizard naturally outspeeds in DD. So yeah, Chandelure was on here to improve the Dragapult matchup, the Durant matchup, and the opposing Charizard Whimsicott matchup. So Chandelure did well. I had Energy Ball, you know, for uh, Gastrodon and uh, Rhyperior. I ran Timid Nature because without it, unfortunately, you cannot outspeed max speed Dragapult, so you have to be Timid. I'd love to go Modest and hit even harder, but that's why we went Timid. So Chandelure was pretty basic, and I threw it on here, and it worked pretty well. So that's Chandelure. Next, I kind of wanted to complete the Firewater Grass Core. You know, I got Whimscott, I got Chandelure, and now I got Rotom Wash. And I also wanted more speed control, which I actually used Electroweb Rotom Wash earlier in the format to a little bit of success. So I kind of wanted to try that out again. And I also needed more water moves. I needed help against Arcanine. Arcanine could still be really annoying, especially for Chandelure, and Didi if it wins the speed tie, Whimscott, all that kind of stuff. So I wanted something that was pretty, pretty solid against Arcanine. So that's where Rotom Wash came in. Honestly, Assault Vest was pretty underwhelming. To be honest, I kind of just wanted to try out an Assault Vest Rotom on this set. And in the future, I would probably go a more standard Citrus Berry and then run either Will-O-Wisp or Protect in the Foul Play slot. So yeah, Rotom Wash, Assault Vest was kind of an experiment, but uh, Rotom Wash is still good on this team. Uh, you know, completing the Firewater Grass Core, helping with Arcanine, all that good stuff. So that's when I added on Rotom Wash. And then let's get to the last member of the team that we added, which was Excadrill. So I needed an answer to opposing Rotom Washes and opposing Excadrills and T-Tars, actually. So that's where I got this super bulky weakness policy Excadrill set. I actually lost to a weakness policy Excadrill once with my own Excadrill. I was Jolly Life Orb and it survived my Max Quake and I was just like, that is insane. How could he ever survive that? And then his weakness policy went off and he just swept my team. I was like, man, that's some bull. So I actually did want to try this set out for that reason. So I'm super bulky, as you guys can see, 252, 140 in defense. That's enough to survive. Jolly, Life Orb, Max Quake from Excadrill. And then I hit the 
bump here with my attack, which um, is actually right here, which you guys, uh, which I talk about in my advanced EV spread guide. And then I've got enough, excuse me, I've got enough speed to outspeed Vileplume outside of the sun and enough speed to outspeed Dragapult, Undertailwind, and all that good stuff. So this was a super bulky extra drill. It was made to help me against um, Rotom and opposing extra drills, which it did just that. Honestly, the set was okay. It was kind of the same as Rotom where I, I wanted to try solve this on Rotom and I wanted to try weakness policy on extra drill. So they were all right. But that was the thing is they were kind of an experiment. So let's get into the conclusion of this team. In conclusion, guys, with this Devil team, I have to say Devil and Didi was actually like straight fire. Like they are a super, super good combo and they just destroy teams because people not only do they not know what they do sometimes and they just get completely rolled, but sometimes they just aren't prepared for insanely strong psychic moves, fake tears, snarl, all that stuff. So Devil and Didi was actually pretty neat. And the thing is, is the rest of the team was okay. Uh, honestly, not anything crazy. I definitely need better counters to Tyrantar Excadrill with this uh, team. And then I was also too reliant on Whimsicott for speed control. I think I need more naturally fast guys like Dragapult over Chandelure perhaps. But yeah, this team was actually really cool. And we showcased Thievul, a very cool underused Pokemon and he actually shined super well so you can definitely make your favorite Pokemon shine if you put your mind to it. So guys I want to thank you guys for watching until the very end of this video I hope you guys had fun and learned a thing or two about making a team with your favorite Pokemon. If you do want to see more super cool teams like this uh, that I've built then please do check me out on Twitch guys. I stream five days a week 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. PST every day except for Wednesday and Saturday so please check me out on there guys uh, that's my livelihood over there so it would really mean a lot to me and I use lots of fun cool teams and hang out with the chat all the time so I'd love to see you guys over there and guys like and subscribe to the channel like this video if you guys really enjoyed it uh, I think this is a very educational video and really fun I think a lot of people would love to see it so support me by leaving a like on this and Guys, comment down below about your guys' favorite weird conventional Pokemon set that you've used to success too. I'd love to hear the wacky, crazy stuff you guys use. But yeah, guys, my next videos that I'm actually working on right now are my all about best of three guide and a tournament preparation guide. So if you guys don't want to miss those, make sure to subscribe. But guys, that's going to do it from me. And thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.